Welcome, everybody. I'm Michael from Boredom Sated. And I'm John from Boredom Sated. And this is our overview of the second book in the Prison Pentat named The Crimson Legion. And just I want to say, um, uh, before we continue our video, uh, if you could please just hit a like, subscribe, hit the notification button for our future videos, we'd really appreciate it. Now on to the book itself. So what did you uh, think of this book overall, just without any spoilers? How was this on your view? This, you to think? me, was the weakest book of the five. All right. Um, okay. Now, That's I have... I have we'll, we'll, explain, wait, wait, we'll explain that at the end. We just want to... <laughs> well, you got to remember that I also have, like, an anti-martial class uh, well, tinge to everything. So, well, the rest of the books are, are you know, the Amber Enchantress, which is, which is a preserver and, and, and magic... And then you got the um, the Obsidian Oracle, which is the Psionics, and then you got the Finisher. Your 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 pre your 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 you don't like fighting. <laughs> you don't like hand to hand combat. All right, I understand that. You don't like those type of what? I understand that. I love those type of things. I love warfare, especially in the medieval period or that type of ancient times, uh, because there's so many things that can go wrong, <laughs> and so many things do go wrong in this book. Um, I enjoyed this. Simply because I always like when the protagonist, in this case, uh, Rikus, uh, really has to work for their victory and gets the crap kicked out of them because it means they're not invincible and they're not just plowing through enemy after enemy and actually gets, you know, hurt and has to work for it. So I, I give this, I, I enjoy this book. But um, let's, let's start with an overview as far as uh, characters, main characters. Uh, there's, of course, Rikus, who is the Mool Gladiator from the Verdant Passage. He's the champion of Tyr and uh, the quote-unquote one of the leaders of the Rebellion. His human lover is Neva. She's a human gladiator. Um, Aegis and Sedira are in the beginning of this book, but they quickly uh, start, um, they immediately go back uh, um, in the beginning in order to deal with Tithian who they believe is uh, learning, and who is actually learning um, magic from uh, um, the Asha. two uh, yeah. Heckle and Jekyll, uh, Sasha yeah. and Wyans, who are hilarious uh, floating undead heads who are basically tormenting him while still teaching him magic. <laughs> and you got to understand that uh, Sasha and Wyan are both former, cha well, former champions of Raja, so they yeah. were once going to become sorcerer kings but they got killed and being their, traitors but being yeah, traitors, traitors. <laughs> and then be, their headed beheaded bodies were well, helping Kalak. yeah uh, and then Kalak got killed and tithian took over as king and yes. now he wants to become a dragon because well why not <laughs> why not <laughs> who doesn't want to become a dragon right. well all right uh so yeah so agus and sidera who are the other two main characters of the um the series they immediately leave so this book can focus on Rikus and his uh, his slave former slave army and the troops, uh, the freedmen of Tyr and Templars and various other people that didn't get to head off an proposed invasion by their northern neighbor, who is the city-state of Uruk, led by King Hamaru. So those are the main characters. Along the way, they have uh, they meet a dwarven clerk, a sun clerk, named Caleb. Kalem, now, if you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, you know the clerics heal. But my god, a, the sun cleric uh, does a hell of a lot more than heal. Uh, here, this this not, this book uh, excited the hell out of me because you got to see how warfare and, and magic um, go hand in hand in Dark Sun. You've seen it sometimes in other um, uh, books and other uh, worlds, uh, but then most most of the other worlds are more medieval esque. There's forests, they have war running water, they have elves and dwarves and whatever else, and their magic is like oh fireball or lightning bolt or you know storm but whatever it is or, or a cloud of obscuring mist something like that. Here it's, this is more brutal. Uh, Dark Sun is very much more brutal, and uh, Kalem as a dwarven sun cleric, um, let's just say. Uh, fire is his friend, and uh, he burns whole columns with fiery molten rain. He creates wall of flame that just scorches people. He uses a magma whip. Oh wow, he, he, he is incredible. 
to you want to be a, you want to play a son like uh and and he uh as soon as you can oh and, and his how does he heal you remember that yes he uh burns you <laughs> with his sun powers and then you heal after a lot of pain <laughs> yes. you, you suffer before you get healed to the point where even Rico's like no I think I'll, I'll bleed thank you <laughs> now remember that, that, that all this stuff is in the earth air fire and water supplement which introduces the parent elemental planes uh, for, for clerics um, and you can check you know some more about that in, in our magic of Athos video Yes, definitely. So this unlikely crew go to um, head off the army and meet them in battle, and uh, they get sidetracked several times trying to get uh, find allies, and um, they meet up with a slave tribe that not exactly turns out well, and they go to the dwarven uh, village of Kled, where they meet up with. Um, uh, that's where they pick up uh, Caleb. But they also find out that Cled, uh, or nearby, under the, the, there's a tomb uh, of the last woman king, whose name is Ricard. And, not Picard, Ricard. <laughs> and here Rickus comes, ah, uh, boy. He, he picks up two, not one, but two artifacts. One is the Belt of Kings, and the other one is the Scourge of Ricard. Now I say this with exasperation because I know what happens throughout the rest of the series, but my God, never left Rikus near an artifact. <laughs> These things are supposed to be indestructible. <laughs> but they never end well. <laughs> never end well, this guy. Anyway, anyway, the Scourge of Ricard is, yeah. Ricard was, like I said, the last woman king. And there's also a third item uh, that they find here, but um, that is uh, stolen from them. Um, it's called the Book of Camelot, Camelot Kings. It's now you understand Dark Sun is very um, let's just say literacy rate is very very low. Uh, most people can't read. Only uh, Templars, sorcerers, and sorcerer kings are literate and have books. Or most of the history is long forgotten over like a two thousand year period or so. So this is one of the few books outside of the clutches of the sorcerer kings that has a knowledge has has a an account of the time period during the Cleansing Wars, which is when um, uh, basically humanity tried to kill everybody else. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more of that. It's going to get revealed more and more. But um, Ricard uh, was the last of the Dwarven Kings who got killed by uh, this fellow, a champion of Rajat named Boris of Elbi. And Boris um, was supposed to have died in that battle as well, but he didn't. He was taken away by his retainers. This will be important because his retainers are still alive. Well, no, they still exist. They're not, not alive. They became wraiths. And Boris is the name of the dragon, who is the main bad guy in the whole series. Okay. So, these guys now move forward after this. And uh, Rikus is charged with trying to find the book. And the book basically becomes a MacGuffin. It becomes like, oh, who has it? Who has it? You know, where, where do we... Where do... It's basically a, a story device to get... Rick is from point A to point B and say, ah. And during this time, he has to do, do battle with um, a creature called an Umbral Giant. Um, what is it? Uh, no, just called Umbra. He's a Shadow Giant. And you get to learn about um, uh, certain uh, cultural aspects. Like, for instance, since there's a, such a shortage of water, how do they clean themselves? Well, Rick is just takes some sand and... <laughs> scours the scours his uh, body with uh, with the, with that. That's how he cleans himself. <laughs> One of the things you want to know, but you never were afraid to ask. <laughs> I don't know why you really like this book. Yeah, there's a lot of magic in this. Most of the time, you use it against Rikus. <laughs> and psionics. <laughs> and psionics. Yeah, there's also some wonderful things going on here. I believe his former master um, from Uric was is a master of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a uh, he's uh, he's a uh, he appears, he's, he's part of the whole MacGuffin thing. He's stealing the book and then, you know, selling the book and whatever else. But, um, oh, there's also a couple of uh, red shirts uh, introduced in this. Um, there's Crick, who is the uh, Thrykeen Mantis Warrior, and Ganon, the good, lovable, half-giant gladiator, and Stil uh, Stylin, who's also a human Templar, 
who we think is, you know, he was, is he or isn't he a traitor type of thing. There's a couple of nobles and uh, other Templars and other characters that uh, Rikus has to butt heads with, you know, just to give him something to do, but also to uh, uh, give him the idea that he is a former slave. And these are all, like, either nobles or Templars or freedmen, and they don't exactly um, uh, want to follow an ex-slave anywhere. And, uh, of course, uh, these type of um, uh, concerns uh, also means that there's a lot of chance that one of them's a traitor, or two of them's a traitor. And we don't know if any of them's a traitor until the end. Oh, the end. The penultimate is the battle where they... Again, this is this is the, the height of stupidity when if you don't have an army that's the that like six to seven times greater in size um, than the enemy, you shouldn't besiege a city, especially not a city of a sorcerer king. But Rikus's army <laughs> tries to besiege Uruk, uh, and they don't have a sorcerer king on their side. <laughs> so Hamanu comes out and says, "All right, this is gonna, this is gonna be fun," and he turns into this this. This is a half, sort of like a centaur type of thing, but with a lion body type of thing. Oh, a centaur with a lion's body, I think. And uh, he proceeds to, uh, yeah, kill a lot of people, <laughs> including some of the Red Shirt characters. <laughs> Poor guys. Uh, but long story short, um, there is a, it's a, it literally demonstrates that despite the fact that Rikus is an ex- a phenomenal fighter, uh, or gladiator in the arena, it doesn't translate to him being a good general. And it shows, and he doesn't um, know the logistics, and he doesn't know the tactics, and his army pays for it, for the most part. Uh, did you want to see anything else? Um, yeah, for, for the, the reason for that war that, that uh, Amanu wanted to attack uh, Tyr is because <laughs> Tyr has the lone iron mine. So you get a big bullseye right on their backs. Um, And he wants that iron mine, and he wants the slaves, or the former slaves, so he can give them to Boris, the dragon, as the uh, tith tith that that they're supposed to. And you'll learn more about why is there a tith in the the later books. Um, And uh, that's why there's like a big target on Tyr, and and of course Tithian wants to become a sorcerer king, so he's running around doing what they call dragon magic. <laughs> just, you know, defilers, <laughs> psionics. So he learned defilers. Yeah. The one you're, uh, you know, I don't know how he's going to achieve it. I think he eventually figures out you can't do it because you have to have psychic ability in order to become a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then he figures out, he figures out another, another option, but uh, that's further down the line. So that is the story of the Crimson Legion. Uh it's not a complete disaster for our heroes, but it is. Um, they're able to um, start stave off um, death uh, and just and the loss of uh, the newfound freedom, and it continues into the Ember Enchantress, the Amber Enchantress, uh, which is Sadira's uh, solo novel. Uh, but it does. Oh, another thing. Uh, well, um, Caleb uh, being introduced as a Dwarven Sun cleric introduces uh, a new romantic interest for Neva, who was uh, Rikus' uh, uh, girlfriend. And eventually, Neva goes off with Caleb. And later on, they produce a son, who will be significant uh, later on in the, no- in the novel series. That's one of the reasons he's uh, Caleb significant, other than being a badass and... and uh, uh, showing us what a clerk can really do in <laughs> combat, or at least a sun clerk can do. But he also, with Neva, gives birth to a mool, also a sun clerk, who will be um, pivotal in the final battles. And uh, is that... I think that's it for me. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers the Crimson Legion. <laughs> yeah. And, a, uh, I think it's a good follow-up from the Verdant Passage. Obviously, it's on Rikus and his crew rather than Aegis and Sidira, who are different, um, they have different, obviously different character, characterizations, and uh, Sidira is definitely um, an interesting character, a very interesting character, and Aegis is uh, more of the noble, and not just talking about because of his lore, uh, his status, he's a more um, uh, noble uh, hero type of character. 
but Sadir is a lot more uh, gray, definitely in the on the edge there. <laughs> she pushes the ends, the ends justify the means. Type she of. is definitely almost you can always consider, uh, consider her an anti-hero in terms of what her attitudes are, and I like that. You know, some people don't. I like. It. And uh, so that is concludes our review and opinion on the Crimson Legion. And the next book in the series, The Amber Enchantress, book three, um, we'll be covering soon afterwards. Okay? So as, I, as before, if you enjoyed our video, hit the like, uh, subscribe, hit the notification button for our next video. If you wanted to comment on this, on this uh, book or the series itself or Dark Sign in general, leave a comment. Please. And, and uh, if I'm, I'm from Boredom City, I'm Michael. And all the Dark Sun stuff are in, in, in a playlist. So if you want to go over the older Dark Sun videos, they're there. You won't have to look too hard to find them. And I'm John from Boredom City.